guys. Yo. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we've got Mike Rinder here, and uh, we've got Aaron Smith Weth on uh, Aaron Smith Levin on the way. And um, yeah, what were you guys? Uh, what you guys finish on over there? You're just doing questions. Yeah, he was doing like a fast round or whatever. lightning round. Lightning okay. round. Lightning round. Well, hopefully Answering he finished. Answering all the same old questions over and over and over. Awesome. Well, <laughs> let's. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, YouTube has no memory, and you get a new audience every week. So, we, you know, we likely could do the same show every week, and new people would be here, and new questions, and then all the people that were, uh, you know, li watching last week are like, Ugh, again, seriously. So so <laughs> you mean we could just record this and then just play it again next week? Totally. Say, oh, yeah. Just call it. Just call it something different. <laughs> Just call it uh i just saw on twitter someone said this is mma mike mark and aaron oh yeah mma nice i like it <laughs> um yeah aaron's still going like people are in the chat yeah. saying they're listening to both streams at the same time you, you can't you can't <laughs> get him off yeah, Once well, started, it's hard. I know it is. And that, I know how it is. That's the way I am. That's why I don't know why we just don't make it an hour. 45 minutes seems like it's too short to be able to answer it. Well, then you'd say, why don't we make it an hour and a quarter? Why don't yeah, we make no, it an hour because and a two hours, two hours it? between the two, that's a lot. So, but, um, but yeah, I, I did a chat with Claire. We wanted to go for an hour. We went for an hour and 40. Um, and then I've done lives where I'm just going to go for an hour and then I go and I do two hours. I like to answer people's questions. And even I was going to say this week, even if you got a bail at a certain time, um, then just bail and then I'll finish answering people's questions just like Aaron's doing now. Um, <laughs> see, that's what I do. I tell Aaron good ideas and then he does them on his channel and then I do them on my channel and it looks like I'm copying him, but I told him to do right. the cutoffs. Right. But um, it's all good. Let's uh, we'll start answering some questions. We don't need Aaron. We don't need a, a Ron to answer questions. And I, I, I do no stinking badge. I do have my secret weapon who's starring questions in the background. Oh, you do. Holy shit. Going clear. 50 bucks going. Oh, do you see that? I didn't see that. Yep. Um, Tarkina. Let's put that one up. Had an idea for Claire's book. Alternatively, chapters al alternatively chapters between being a child in scientology and then being a mother now would be a totally unique concept compared to other scientology books out there um yeah that's a good idea claire's in there she starred this question so she she saw this um we did talk last night on the um yeah on the t top 10 tuesdays last night on monday um claire decided that while i'm on my next project when i travel out of town to do an installation she's going to write her book during that time oh and so In every spare moments yeah because usually two businesses she, and three kids well yeah but she <laughs> she's pretty efficient and she's got people too she's got like a, i want to say she's up to like six or seven people that she's got working for her but um when I'm gone and when I'm doing a project, there's not all the equipment coming and going and a lot of that kind of calms down. So No, it's just you calling her from wherever we are saying, Claire, the TV's the squatter didn't arrive. Claire. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> that. But you know, whatever. Okay. Um, here we go. Does the Sea Org still wear their naval uniforms much anymore? If no, why not? Um, well, you answer that, Mike. They they do internally, like in the organizations that are not actually seen by the public, like at Golden Era, they yeah. still wear Sea Org uniforms. At Flag, at AOLA, they wear Bellhop uniforms. You know the the specially designed uniforms for Scientology staff members in organizations and. That's they look like because, fancy magicians. That's what they look like. Yeah, or bellhops. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess so. I, I thought uh, when I saw their latest one, because they've got like a, they've got, they're rolling higher than a bellhop salary. They've got those scarves, you know, 
those fancy like embro- they're not embroidered but they're like printed with the Scientology logo of that organization and yeah they're very, it's very and they've got fancy. the little hink- handkerchief and the whole it's, it's look they look like magicians to me <laughs> <laughs> and they and they do wear Sea Org uniforms on the free winds where they're at sea they do right. wear them there too right but the but, reason they don't wear Sea Org uniforms in the other places is because uh it started really in Clearwater, where the local citizenry got really tired of seeing the um, the Navy walking up and down the street all day long. Every and, meal break, and just a parade. Com- complained <laughs> endlessly that it was scaring everybody away from downtown, which <laughs> yeah. it was. And, and they've never come back since. Right. <laughs> and, and then they started with the, well, we're going to design, design uniforms to keep uh, the image of Scientology good in these new ideal organizations because we got marble floors and hand-woven rugs now, so we can't have people walking around in shorts and, and wife beaters. But they don't have enough money to dry clean those in a lot of those orcs. So they're pretty, <laughs> you know, like when you've got a really nice shirt that you should dry clean and you decide to wash it and put it through the dryer. It's never the same after that. That's what they're doing kind of all over the place. Get those little white balls that kind of collect on it. Ugh. Oof. Well, that's because they're all polyester anyway. I know. It's so bad. Well, even at the Golden Era, when I first got to Golden Era in 1990, Golden Era wore long sleeve polyester shirts, nylon pants, leather shoes, or f- or pleather, or whatever the fake leather, cheap leather. And we were in the middle of the California desert. Can you imagine wearing long sleeves on a 104 degree day? With ties. With ties. <laughs> yeah. It was about, I think it was about five years in when we switched over to like shorts and like J. Crew shirts. And everybody was like, Are you kidding me? Why did we not think of this f- t- 10 years ago? Okay. This one's for you, Mike. I already know what you're going to say. History of man. Okay. Couch. Which of LRH's book is the craziest one so I can buy it on eBay? Okay, History Mike. of Man. Oh, okay, good. There you go. Um, yeah, History of Man is insane. It's rumored oh. to be based on the drug trips of L. Ron Hubbard Jr. Mike is oh, Mike's getting the book. That's another thing you don't know. Mike's got a go-to reference library of here. He has the book, and this is the latest one. It's not this is the, the one this from is... 20 years ago or something. This has been combed through by Scientology. They have fixed every semicolon, every possible thing, and Mike is going to read us a little pe- teeny piece from this real quick. I'm going I'm to read you the first lines of the book. This is a cold-blooded and factual account of your last 76 trillion years. The test of any knowledge is its usefulness. Does it make one happier or more able? By it and with it, can he better achieve his goals? This is useful knowledge. With it, the blind again see, the lame walk, the ill recover, the insane become sane, and the sane become saner. By its use, the thousand abilities man has sought to recover become his once more. <laughs> yeah, babe. We're, um, and that's folks, the, that's the same part. That's the most, like, un exaggerated, ex- ex- crazy thing in the entire book. There's monsters in this book, <laughs> there's people getting eaten. Um, there's people eating. Isn't there people eating other people? Oh yeah, and there, and, and that's where clams comes from. Oh yeah, there's there is this book. This book you get If you don't have a lot of crazy in your life, this one book will top you up right off the boom, right like that. Okay, this one, uh, Claire Alice. Thank you, Claire Alice. Mark, your book is excellent, hilarious, insane. Just finished. Mike, your book is great. Reading now, have the bobblehead, watching Claire's story, holy manipulative cult, 
child abuse. Aaron, your daily uploads mean the world. Wow, this Claire, Claire, I don't. You're really just you're checking all the boxes here. You you might be a super fan. Um, thank you very much, Claire Alice. I appreciate that. She's got it all. Me it's too. Not, we need to send her a, a SP bracelet. <laughs> hey there, MMA. Aaron, what's your workout? Re well, Aaron's not here. We'll come back to that one. Um, Aaron is, oh, you know what? I just, oh, I had a, I just, my heart dropped. You thought you hadn't let him in? No, I thought I hadn't hit the live button and I hadn't let him in. <laughs> I was like, no, did I not let live. Aaron in? And then I was like, oh my God, did I not start the broadcast? Speak of the devil. <laughs> Aaron. There he is. There he hey! is. Hey, now, Mike, you really do have to move. just tilt your camera down. Don't you don't have to move your body. Just make the camera make it work. There you go. Um, somebody asked about you, Aaron. We're gonna do pistons again on my channel. We're gonna do pistons. Um, oh, somebody asked an Aaron question. OCD, fine. Someone asked an Aaron question, Aaron, and yeah. then. I thought, oh my God, did, have I not let him in? Has he been down? Because it's it's it, my screen, the way it's set, I can't see down there. And then I realized, oh, did I hit the live button? Have I been talking to Mike this whole time? And I didn't let Aaron in and I didn't hit the live button. Okay. Hey there, MMA, Aaron, what's your workout regimen to prep for your inevitable clash with Hollywood Hulk Hogan? <laughs> Mark, which liquid death is it tonight? <clears throat> Uh, chainsaw, mango chainsaw, mango chainsaw. Um, Mike, happy birthday to Christy. You rarely talk about Marty. Give us happy Marty story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aaron, you first with the workout. Just lifting logs and sides of pork ribs. Oh, wow. <laughs> and heads of lettuce behind the scenes, BTS. <laughs> <laughs> and six pound carrot cakes. Oh, yes, my God. We, Mike, we went out to dinner. We went out to dinner at this restaurant. And, you know, it's a dessert menu. And one slice of cheesecake, a uh, oh, carrot cake, is like six I mean, it must, pounds. Yeah, it must have been six pounds. <laughs> That's like 6,000 calories, Aaron. Nobody no. ate it. Well, nobody thousand. ate it. Nobody like, ate it. Nobody could eat the Everyone whole ordered thing. one. Oh, everyone ordered one? Not everyone, but there was like six at the table. There was like 12 people, and there was six of these things at the table. And one of and them could have fed all six people. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what we said when it came out. We said, well, we're going to just cut that one into six pieces. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I like me some carrot cake, but that icing. Ugh, that was monstrous. Anyway. Okay, so, um, yeah, I guess we got it all. We're good. Um I don't know a good, I don't know a happy Marty story. Um, I'll oh, tell you. I don't know. There's plenty of, there's plenty of happy Marty stories. I mean, well, some of those that videos. You have. I was on the bad end of Marty stories, not the good, not the happy end. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we had fun doing those fishing videos. They were fun. Oh, yeah. After he was out. Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a happy Marty story. That's I true. Didn't yeah. I didn't have many inside side talks. <laughs> um, we went to Marty's. I took my um my two boys when they were little. We went to Marty's house in um, Ingleside by the Bay or Ingleside at the Bay, whatever that place was called, and um, we just went out to his backyard. We put some shrimp on uh, fishing reels. We put them in the water. The second the hook hit the water, we caught a fish and we pulled it out like a big fish. And my boys had the most fun ever fishing. And now my young, my youngest, who wasn't part of that, he wasn't around th then. Um, now we went on a fishing trip with Mike <laughs> and um, we went fishing and we caught 55. Was it 55 fish? We caught 55 Shit fish load. between... Mike's boys and my boys and um and Matt Pesh. We caught fifty five fish. It was it was a lot of fish. Okay. Still this is not a fishing it. show. Um how many Scientologists in and out every year worldwide? You know, Aaron did a really good video about that over on his channel. I yep. think it might be the best video ever done about the membership and the st uh, the staff and Sea Org figures of Scientology. I don't think 
anyone's ever done it. Aaron did it somehow. He shot a little high, but that's fair. On and purpose, he says that purpose. in the video. He did it on purpose. Yeah. But um, it's a really good video. And that probably will answer your question. It, it doesn't really, the in and out numbers are not really, there's not really a way to, um, to capture those, but it's going down progressively. So that's all you need to know. We just got to keep but working. The, the, big, the big truth out of this is that the number of people coming in to Scientology has been declining every year since the mid 90s. Yeah, the, the next... number of people going out of Scientology has been increasing every year since the mid 90s. Yeah, and the next video you got to do, Aaron, is you got to do the org counts. Well, because... he did one. He did one on Celebrity Center, and then I did a blog post today about that, following up on it, listing the celebrity centers that were in the What is Scientology book, the back of What is Scientology book, yeah. and what's happened to them, yeah. I, and and the Hubbard policy letter, which I'm sure is in the perfect admin now, that about org reduction and eradication that they're never that. allowed to close ever forever and, and of like cc munich is closed cc london's closed cc portland's closed cc las vegas is closed cc nashville became an org cc portland became an org i mean it's just like one after the other after the other they're gone yeah yeah well but you could do a spreadsheet where you show these are what they said they had in 1965 this is what they said in 1985 this is what they said in 2005. This is what it is in 2023 or whatever. I guarantee you it's lower than before. <laughs> it, it is, but not dramatically. And and that's a it's sort of an important point. They have propped up the orgs in the world by buying buildings for them that sit empty. But those organizations are still there because the building is there yeah the, they're empty and nothing's happening in them but there is also another thing about this the the size and scope of scientology and you know we're clearing the planet and we're taking over the world and this and that you know in there is not a single org in india there is not a single org in china there is not a single org in southeast asia there is not a single org in all of africa except south africa and two empty um places that are used for transient homeless people have taken them over in zimbabwe that, that really is true yeah like there they is, don't there's no staff there anymore no they're, they're just they're just they they're gave up derelict. on those they, they gave up on those some time ago wow and you know all of south america there's no org in brazil not a single one in Brazil. There's only orgs in Venezuela and Argentina out of all of South America. There's only an orgs in Mexico out of Central America. There, I mean, it's just like this idea that Scientology convinces itself that they are clearing the planet and we are like, we're moving in and we're <laughs> gearing up and we're this and we're that is completely absurd they're yeah. not going anywhere i mean there's 25 states in the u.s that don't have a scientology organization yeah it's ridiculous they don't uh they're not uh they're not doing anything that's making any big splashes there hasn't well, been a new a new organization opened in the united states since the Los Gatos mission was forced to turn into an org and Joey Alessandrini was held under house arrest because the IRS was coming after him and it was going to cost Scientology its exemption because he had a wine cellar in the mission that was funded by the revenue from the mission that had like $10,000 bottles of wine. Wow. Those are the cra those are the Wild West days back then. <laughs> that, that tax deductible wine is my favorite kind of wine. <laughs> <laughs> it has the best. You get the best buzz from the tax write off wine. Yeah. But Mike Harlem and Inglewood are the probably <clears throat> would you say the only two orgs in the last forty years that have opened up? 
Yes, that's correct. Yeah. I forgot about those. But that was only because of Isaac. Yeah. Yeah. There was no organic demand for those orgs. Miscavige. And how, by the way, by the way, how racist is it? This is uh, like, bear with me here. Yes. Where Isaac, Isaac, Isaac Hayes goes, Mr. Miscavige, I wish we had more black people in Scientology. And, and instead of Miscavige going, wait, there's black people in Philly, Chicago, yeah. Boston. He goes, I know what we'll do. We'll go to Harlem. And Inglewood, yeah, because that's where all the black people live. Yep, that's what David Miscavige thinks. <laughs> that's what he sees on the TV. <laughs> that's what like Compton. Yeah. Compton, are we, are we an open organ Compton? Isn't that where they are? <laughs> Watts. Are there any historical buildings in Watts that we can get our hands on? Oh shit. Ugh. Okay. Here we go. This one's for Aaron because he was on the tech lines. Oh, Amanda H says, has anyone claimed to be L. Ron Hubbard reborn? I think it's me. Can I go take over the mansion? I smoke cools. <laughs> <laughs> I know we all hear stories of this. When I was at Asho, there was the bookstore officer was literally this crazy Latin American guy who thought he was L. Ron Hubbard. And this little young girl who had graduated the EPF with him was Mary Sue Hubbard. And um, this guy was kicked out of the Sea Org. They could not get rid of him fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> and and so that's people who who think they are L. Ron Hubbard. Bunny Dubin said that she could telepathically communicate with L. Ron Hubbard, and she was in trouble for cheating on her husband. But she said, no, 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 it's okay. I spoke to Ron about it. He said it was fine. <laughs> she she cheated on Dennis. She cheated on Dennis. Yes. Oh, Dennis Dubin. Debbie, was it Debbie Dubin? Oh, Bunny Dubin. Bunny. Dennis Dubin and Bunny Dubin. Bunny and then, Dubin. Uh, and then somewhere in that in that um, family triangle, whatever was Peaches Pook. Peaches yeah. Pook. Remember Peaches? Yes. So anyway, so the question is about L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, so <laughs> that's someone I personally knew was claiming to be L. Ron Hubbard. Did you guys have anyone on the base who was pretending to be L. R. H. or claiming to have been L. R. H. Not L R H, but of. but we had a rogues of gallery of every Abraham Lincoln and Gandhi and Alexander the Great, yeah, and like all, Quentin all sorts and of all, all sorts kinds of, of people. Yeah, it was always um, that was our People magazine when somebody would say something crazy in their auditing, everybody'd find out about it. Um, Erica Bickers says, "Hey guys, I love listening to your Scientology stories. Love y'all. Thank you, Erica. I appreciate it." Um, what is the big dude? Thank you, big dude. He was just over on Aaron's channel and he comes, he's a frequent flyer. What is the difference between Miscavige and a dwarf? Very little. Good going there, big dude. Question that answers itself. I love those. Those are great. That's a good super chat if you can get it. Yeah. Questions with answers. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I just have to learn how to read and I'm good. Austin bros. Uh, check out the Epsilon program. GTA 5 spoof of Scientology. Oh, yes, I've heard of this. I've seen this. Uh, that's a game. It's a video game, guys. Okay, um, Ren B. Um, have you seen the movie The Host about alien souls that are placed into human bodies to ensure the world is less violent? My son mentioned it sounds like Scientology. Yeah, maybe. I haven't heard of... I, have you guys heard of that movie? No. No. I've been I've been watching too much YouTube lately. I've been I haven't been watching a lot of movies. But it reminds. Um, what's that? Well, it reminds me. Just um, it's it might be a little off topic, but do you guys did you guys ever see the TV show Nip Tuck? No. This was on TV right when I got out of the Sea Org in like 2006, and there was an entire season. This was a very popular show. An entire season where they joined Scientology. They joined. Uh, they they went to the Free Winds and all this kind of stuff. There was all sorts of dramatic family disconnection. That was some of the most in the weeds plot lines relating to Scientology I've ever seen. But then that reminded me also of the movie The Master. If they made some version of The Master. But it had to do with, you know, people being on OT7 and losing their minds from all the BTs and all the like if something about BTs and OT5 and OT7 actually got into popular culture. Uh, can you imagine the effects that would have in Scientology world, like kind of like the South Park stuff, but even like I'm talking like a Hollywood movie, not like a Comedy Central cartoon. Yeah, I right. think somebody should take a bite at that apple. Well, yeah. well, the Kaminsky method did. I mean. That, that was true. pretty good. 
That, that was, was like, really good. <laughs> yeah. Isn't the guy uh, who saw dead people, he's the one who's a Scientologist in that, right? Uh, yeah. Joe, Joel Osman. Haley Joel, Haley Joel Osman. Yeah. Yeah. He's good. I like him. Okay. Uh, Carrie, thank you. You can put a question in there next time if you want. I'll read it. Um, okay. Jacqueline R17. Which Portland had a CC? Portland, Oregon. What oh. other Portland is there? Portland Maine. Cement. Maine. Portland, Maine. Oh, yes. Portland, Maine. Yes, yes, yes. Portland. Yes. There's cement. no Scientology in Maine. No, there's not. That's see, they like to go right in the middle. That might be too white for them. I don't know, or it's just two people that are just not gonna buy it. L. Ron Hubbard did not like lobsters. He didn't. <laughs> they keyed in his whole track engrams. Yeah, they keyed exactly. In his They're out of incident. history of man. <laughs> you know, one time. I don't know if I've ever told you guys this. <laughs> whenever there was a certain event crew that would go to the events, and whenever they'd go, they'd send me food back from the event. And um, and because oh, they would have nice food when they went to the event. At the base, we didn't have the best food. I mean, it was okay, but it wasn't the best. But when they would go to these events, like they'd go to the free wins, and if I didn't get to go, I'd be like, oh, man, I love the food on the free wins. So one year of the event crew from the free wins, they sent me a FedEx and it had two lobsters and a ton of shrimp and a bunch of stuff in it. And it was just, it was just in some foil and they just shoved it into that FedEx box. You know, the one you get at the, the post office or whatever, just, or at the FedEx place. And, um, they sent it to me from the free winds. And then, um, and then they came back like two weeks later after all the events were over and everything. And they go, did you get that package? And I said, Oh yeah, it was so good. And they were like, you didn't eat it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I put that in the microwave. I ate it right up. I took out the foil. And they're like, dude, it took five days to get to you. <laughs> 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 it was probably sitting in L.A. for a day. Then it went to the base for a day. And then it got delivered to my office. Anyway, I love me some lobster, especially five-day-old microwave lobster. Okay, I crashed into the back of a car at the lights today. Miscavige got out of it and said, I'm not happy. I said, all right, well, which one are you then? <laughs> <laughs> nice one, PZ. Nice one. That was solid. Grumpy. That was solid. My delivery wasn't bad either. Okay. Russ T, repeat question. Got any stories about Clarice B or Gary Weesey? Are either of them still there at end? Thank you, Russ T. I did see that question over on Aaron's and I told him to star it. But he doesn't do he does everything in I, order. I, I and got I just, to it like 20 And I'm just later. Rando. I'm Dr. Rando. Okay. Um Clarice Barnett, I worked with her. That's Shelly Miscavige's sister. And we worked in an area called the Gauss Line. And it's just because of the equipment that we operated was made by a company called Gauss. And um we made tapes, cassette tapes. And C B was the ran that the the one that ran these machines that were reproduced the cassette tapes and they were called slaves. And um, that's actually the name of them. There's a master machine and then there's slaves. And, um, and sometimes I would call her the slave master. That's it. That's the end of the story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had to clean these machines every time they got run. And I was the quality control and her and this other guy named Tony, Tony Cifarelli, this guy from New York, this loud New Yorker guy who would say the most inappropriate things at the most inopportune times. And one time, um, Tom Cruise came to our area and this guy's name was Tony Cifarelli. So his initials were TC and Tom Cruise was coming to our area and his initials were TC and Tony Cifarelli thought it'd be really funny if he called him TC and he got assigned lowered conditions, which is kind of like a punishment in the Sea Org. And then Larice Stuckenbrock, or maybe it was Tori Viao, somebody from RTC came to a Golden Era Productions musters after this incident happened and told everyone in Golden Era Productions, it's either Mr. Cruz or Sir. Not TC, not Tom, not Tommy Boy, not Top Gun, not Maverick, Mr. Cruz or Sir. Okay. Gary Weesey? You want yeah, to do you, a Gar Gary Weesey 
Mr. Incorrigible. Yes. There was an issue put out by David Miscavige assigning Gary Weesey the condition of incorrigible. Do you remember when it came out? No. It came out in 1993 as a result of him messing up the edit on the IES event. Okay. The IRS, IES event. IES, IRS uh, tax exemption event, the war is over event. Um, That was the first issue. It was reissued in the 2000s. It was the same exact issue. And it just said, at the top, just said reissued and the new date. And then it was the exact same (laughs) issue. (laughs) Right, Mike? Yep. (laughs) Oh, that's our Gary Weesey story. That's about the best Gary Weesey story you're ever going to hear right there. Um, That's some high quality. Uh, Catherine Olson, she does it every week. BPI sells LRH books through Amazon, by the way. Thank you, Right, Catherine. but the seller will still say Bridge Publications. It won't say John John W. or something, you know? Yeah, not They're like they do to Bridge our books. selling books through fake accounts. They might be yeah. selling through authorized, you know. Unless there are books. There's people selling my book on Amazon for like $872 for a paperback copy. There's like multiple ones of those. I'm not sure what the reasoning is behind that dana thomas thank you dana i've seen you in here before time for a drinking game if mark says basically oh you're gonna be drunk take a drink (laughs) if mike says blah 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 take a drink if aaron wears a black shirt take a drink good luck (laughs) oh you're getting wasted if anybody plays by all three you're drunk that's it it's done i've already said basically 782 times already um okay i have heard about these drinking games root w mark you need to eventually make the spy files as a movie series mike you were in west berlin or paris when we marched were you in west berlin or paris when we marched not paris but yes west berlin wow i was at the head of the west berlin march in fact i spoke at the west berlin march i flew over there from the is event to attend that west berlin march and then after i left they edited me out of all the footage Wow. I was walking next to Ann Archer and Isaac Hayes and whoever else was there. I can't even remember. Wow. There you go. Okay. We've got one. This is, I guess it's a comedy time. Here we go. It's bound to happen. L. Ron Blubbard says, <laughs> how many Scientologists does it take to change a light bulb? None. Once it blows, they just disconnect and tell everyone it was never a good light bulb anyway. <laughs> Okay, this is good. People are getting really uh, randy out here with the uh, Crimson One. I was listening to an interview with Jason Begay, and he mentioned that sec checks made him lose his mind. What is a sec check? I'll let you answer that one, Aaron, because you are our tech guy. Well, a sec check is a particular type of auditing where the only purpose of it is to get you to divulge all these horrible, destructive, terrible things that you've done and haven't wanted to tell people about. Usually that's just something that happens in as a byproduct of of doing normal auditing. But a sec check is just dedicatedly purely focused on what have you done that I don't know about? What have you done that your wife doesn't know about? What are you withholding from anyone? Like and and there's standard questions that Elvin Hubbard created in forms and there's tailor made sec check questions. That's when they go through your history and they ask you questions specifically designed for your work your post, um, uh, your hobbies, uh, different groups that you're a part of. And sec checking can, I mean, it never made me lose my mind, but it made me bored out of my mind. But like you, when you come up with something that you've done, if the meter, if the e-meter doesn't give you the needle action that the auditor is looking for to indicate that you've finished, you have to keep thinking of things that are earlier similar, earlier similar, earlier similar, until you're remembering uh, you're coming up with, you know, uh, memories from billions and trillions of years ago. You're just making shit up. So even sex checking can become just a pure um, fantasy. And yet you're dealing with these imagine these imaginative fantasies or whatever as if they're real. Like they're things that you are claiming to have actually done and taking responsibility for. Wiping out civilizations, you know, um, pulling atmospheres off of planets, you know, um, it it, it can get really crazy. I wonder what kind of stuff Jason Begay, like um, this sort of also gets into the subject of are celebrities treated like royalty or are sometimes celebrities treated like actual crap? Jason Begay sounds like there were times he was being treated like crap. 
right? Oh, he, but he wasn't a big celebrity. That's why he, he was, was in. Oh. He was an inside Scientology celebrity. He had I, been in movies and he'd been in a lot of TV shows, but he never had his own hit show until he right. left Scientology. And that's one of the reasons why they're really pissed with him in particular yep. is he left and he flourished amazingly as mm -hmm. uh, career wise. He knocked it out of the park and um, is still knocking it out of the park. And um, that doesn't really bode well for all the other celebrities that are still booking you know, dentine commercials 27 years later. <laughs> By the way, Aaron, you could book a dentine commercial right now, if I, if I, if I must say so. Um, <laughs> Chris OZ, hi all. Any of you know anything about the mission that was in Hicksville, New York on Long Island? Every time I would pass by there, it was an absolute ghost town. Oh. Missions are just privately owned. A Scientologist pays $35,000 for a mission starter package. Scientology gives them some books, some course packs, some routing forms. Like a mission isn't even a real Scientology organization. You could have a mission that doesn't even have any full time staff members. So, this is why, you know, people will keep going, oh, there's a Scientology org by me in Pittsburgh. No, there's not. There's no Scientology org in Pittsburgh. There's someone who put up a website that says, you know, they're maybe they're open Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 3.30 to, you know, 6.10, and no one's ever there. So um, that's a long answer to missions are sort of like DMT elves. They don't really exist except in your imagination. DMT elves? I just pulled that from a Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> yeah, some people see the elves and talk to them, and some people don't see the elves. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness missions, <laughs> missions. <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> yeah missions are almost always ghost towns yeah there used to be a mission right by jason begay's house in malibu and it was right next to this restaurant that we would go to all the time and every time we would go there I'd be like, should we go over there real quick? He'd be like, oh, no, come on, man. I'm like, I got to go over there. And he'd be like, no, 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 man, come on. I'd be like, come on, come on. And and then we would go, and it would always be empty. There'd be like one person in there answering the phone. That's it. Okay, um, Claire, you got to stop. Okay, this is an official no more question announcement. We answer the ones that are starred, and that's it. Um, personal question. How difficult is explain to your children the life you had in COS? Are each of us here chatting tonight officially SPs? Mike, how about the how about about how is COS fair gaming Steph? I don't know who Steph is. Stephanie. Stephanie Hutchison. Oh yes. They just keep keep going after a like with. I mean, the last one was a picture of Steph with a like it looks like one of those mug shots with a sign saying I'm Mike Rinda's personal public relations officer or something underneath it. That's what they I mean, put on the board. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I told her I tweeted. I saw that when she tweeted that out. And I was like, if you got a hate site, you're doing it right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that means you hit a nerve and Stephanie's amazing. No one's ever fact checked these guys in 70 years. And she just started fact checking videos and websites. They, they have stuff on their website about them meeting with somebody like, Oh, let's call that person up and find out. And the person's like, Oh, I never endorsed Scientology. You're like you're on their website endorsing Scientology. You're like I never did that. And they're like, Yep, they said you did. And then the person writes them a nasty, nasty gram saying, hey, you got to take that down. And every time she pulled a string, it was 100% false. Whatever Scientology posted, 100% false. Yep. Yep. She's amazing. And she does she does this all sort of out of the goodness of her heart because yeah. she feels like it's not right what's going on. She's never been a Scientologist. She doesn't have any any particular you know dog in the fight she just thinks this is wrong so speaks out about it and does a really good job of it she's yeah. so meticulous and writes really well and she is uh, a treasure yeah she is um i'm gonna let this one um i've never heard of this before is john mayer still in scientology i didn't know he ever was is he in scientology no he was never in no i don't think so yeah that's news to unless me. it's some other john mayer that's not that odd a name yeah not guitar singer john mayer that we know of goldie 
Oh, never seen her before. Um, Goldie is in every single video, and she's a moderator. Aaron, can you tell us more about when the D Martinos did to make things so miserable for you? Oh, well, here's the, the elevator pitch version. So Bonnie was the ED. Her husband, Attilio, was the LRH communicator. And their son, Edward, was like, uh, they made him like the, the director of training or whatever. And Where the was thing this? Is Philadelphia Org. Okay. And Bonnie would sell her MLM water filter products at all of the Scientology events. And because um, Edward lived off of mommy's money, and I actually had it to support myself with a job, Bonnie would make sure that Edward waited until I wasn't on post for him to send all the students in the academy downstairs to buy the books they didn't have for their check sheets. So even though we're all supposed to be like a tech team working together, she's making sure that her son, who doesn't even have to work for a living, is getting all the book commissions from the court. I mean, this is the kind of just sick, twisted shit. Like, you have to be a real steaming piece of shit to try to put <laughs> to, 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 to figure out how you're going to financially benefit. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Aaron. No, the yeah. Martinos are such horrible pieces of trash. And I'm glad that it's no, I won't say that. Okay. Sorry. I, I, I bit my tongue on that one. And that um, was the elevator pitch version of that story, guys. <laughs> just so you know. And Edward is clearly closeted. Just so you know. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> just a little zinger for the end there. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Thanks for weighing in on that uh, subject. Um, up Mayo, something more uplifting. No question, just sending high fives. Thank you, thank you, Up Mayo. Oh wow, we just went from zero to one hundred and seventy right there. Do you get a Tesla over there? Who? Uh, Jen Fralick. Did DM make himself an Oscar for Battlefield Earth, like when he made himself an Emmy for the Ted Compo? <laughs> Loved your books, Mike and Mark. Looking forward to Claire's. Thank you, Jen. That's awesome. Um, no, I'm pretty sure Dave doesn't want anybody to know that Battlefield Earth was his personal pet project. <laughs> exactly. Olson 1980 says, super sticker. Thank you, Olson. You could put a question in there. I'll answer it. I'll try. Um, here we go. It never ends. Austin Bros. Is Marty still making hate videos about you guys? I don't know. Does he make them? I've never been to his site. I've never seen one single video that he's done. Oh, I've I've seen dozens of them. They they if, used to show up on the aftermath all the time. I don't know if there are any. I know he did uh, apparently people told me he did a review of my book and said that my book was all made up. So Oh. That's a bummer. They, they have, at, from, at time to time, uh, republished the videos he already did. I haven't seen any Oh, uh, like they just kind of, uh, you know, Febreze them bring and put them out, out again? Yeah. Bring, out, <laughs> yeah. bring out the brown jacket videos. Yeah, that's called, that's a term I just made up. That's called Febrezing. Febrezing, <laughs> when you do that. You don't actually do anything new. You just spray it. Poodle Boo. Thank you. you oh, no, Poodle Lou. Sorry, Poodle Lou. Whew, I almost called her Poodle Boo. Thank you, Poodle Boo. Appreciate that. That's very generous of you. Um, big dude, back again for more. Is it true that Mike Renders saw John Travolta's masseuse kiss him and say, hold on tight, John, I'm coming in dry. I'm not sure. You know, is that, Mike, is that uh, wait, something? Pick me, pick me. <laughs> okay, Aaron. Pick me, pick me. Aaron. Michael Jackson's nephew just inadvertently or otherwise re-outed John Travolta on Instagram yesterday. Michael Jackson's nephew? He was publishing a tribute to Lisa Marie, and he published some text messages with her over Thanksgiving. And she goes, come on over, sweetie. It's just me and Dan and Riley and the baby and Johnny and Greg. <laughs> and I have it from authority that That's Johnny a... and Greg are Johnny Travolta and Greg. And I'm just thinking to myself, my, my first reaction to that is, great. Well, Fantastic. finally. Fantastic. But it makes yeah. me wonder if... If John Travolta is hanging out with his boyfriend at Lisa Marie Presley's house over Thanksgiving, is it just me? Does that not seem to indicate that John is drifting away, you, hanging out? I mean, what do you think, Mike? I mean, I know they were. Does John Travolta just do whatever the hell he wants whenever he wants anyway? Pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. That's how he rolls. Yeah. I don't really think he cares what Scientology set does or says about him. He has found a place for it in his life that he appreciates, and he doesn't really care what they think or what they do. Or it's it's kind of like Kirsty. Um, it helped her get off drugs. 
and little else in her entire life. And she's held with it until the very bitter end. I, I think one of the big things that kept John from being as overt as he might otherwise have been was Kelly. He didn't want that relationship to be publicly sullied. I mean, he did absolutely adore Kelly. Regardless of whatever else, that she was she was like the apple of his eye apart from his kids and you know whatever that's that's my comment Makes awesome sense. okay um this guy has written to me he's super chatted he he is very convinced that zing a zenu ming the Mer merciless from flash gordon originated in 1934 in his opinion page 29 paperback going clear last sentence of second to last paragraph lrh referred to himself as flash gordon okay thank you jason um i don't know what to say i can't uh i can't refute the super chat hey guys um erica bickers says hey guys i love listening to your scientology stories love you all thank you i might have shown that one before there's somebody else who said the exact same thing jorge avila hey jorge has anybody ever shot a gun off inside the main booth? <laughs> um, if, if anybody did, it would have been Danny Donegan. <laughs> or Jorge. <laughs> Jorge used to be a security guard at the Ent base. Jorge, do you know? So is he asking that question because he did it? I don't, I know, don't know. But I will tell you I've this. I've never heard this story before, if so. I will tell you this. Jorge used to be the rover which was the person on the motorcycle who drove all around the property. So if an alarm went off, he would get on the Rover bike and it was like a Yamaha or a Kawasaki 650 off-road dirt bike, very fast and very light. And he drove it into a ditch or across a riverbed or something. And he broke bones and destroyed the bike and a whole bunch of other stuff. So maybe I'll have to have him on. He can tell that story. He 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 just answers saying yes, exclaim, exclaim, exclaim. Oh yes, my God. That somebody shot a gun off in the main booth. Oh my God. <laughs> See, Jorge, we wouldn't know that because if you were in security, you wouldn't tell us that. But he said so, and covered it up. Nobody knew. Wow. Does he say <laughs> who shot? Did was it him? Yeah, he said he did it. Oh my God, Jorge, you maniac. Um, a water hole. It's right there, a little higher. His, uh, his I co and covered it up. Nobody do. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, Jorge. Well, thank you for that. We're getting in. We're getting int based stories live and in the chat now. Um, Calico twenty six says, Mike, how does your son feeling knowing that he has siblings that he will probably never, never having a relationship with because of Scientology? How does that affect your family life? Um. He feels sad about that. He feels more sad that he has never known any grandparents. Um, and that kind of, that seems more immediate or has been more immediate for him because there's grandparents day at school and that sort of stuff. But he does understand um, the reason for it. And, you know, he last in the last six months watched the aftermath or a, a, quite a lot of episodes of the aftermath. He's sort of old enough to watch it now. So he's pretty well clued in as to the world of Scientology. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. There you go. Matthew Clark. Mike's book was amazing. Mark's book was hilarious. When does Aaron's book come out? I give go, it about, Aaron. I give it about five years. Five years. Okay, good. We'll uh, remember that answer because you can give that next same one next week. Olson1980 says, love my SP bracelet and bobblehead, Mike Renner. Thank you. That's awesome. We are selling a ton of bobbleheads and bracelets, guys. You better get in there and get some before they're all gone because I'm not. I'm, yeah. Oh, I, I, I. it's not about the bobbleheads. I, wanted, I just wanted to get it before you pull up another comment. Yeah. So um, one of the things I've been doing when I talk about certain things on my channel is I will ask viewers to help me 
go look at shit and check out an area. Um, and so, Mike, you mentioned on your blog post today that there was two CCs that yeah, you weren't Vienna sure and were closed. Vienna and Florence. And so I asked some viewers in Vienna and Florence if they'll go and check it out. And I'm mentioning that because when I asked people to go and check out CC Munich, I had three separate people go there physically, take photos and videos, go inside, up the elevator, onto the floor, talk to people, get information and find out what was going on and email me back. So wow. Mark, you, so you, you, I, I'm, I'm mentioning this as a recommendation uh, it's something you can do on your channel when it's nice. appropriate, Mark. Yeah, totally. Yeah, when I need info, I send out the feelers. And, you know, I've mentioned this in the past. Um, in the last few weeks, I've had Scientologists, ex-Scientologists, ex Sea Org members all contact me that I haven't really been in touch with in some cases 40 years that these people have contacted me. So... There's a lot I, I can tell just by the I haven't been doing this more than, you know, several weeks at this point, uh, almost two months, maybe, I guess. And um, there's a lot of Scientologists watching these videos. And I can tell from Aaron's because he's getting all kinds of hot skinny. And but um, yeah, if you're out there and you're watching, drop us a line. Um, the Loopy Alchemist. Does Scientology have any doctrine on ghosts post OT3? Like, are they just Thetans that have yet to find a body? What about UFOs since the Galactic Confederacy is a thing? Um, I'll let you answer that, Aaron, since you're our tech guy. Well, well pull the comment back up. Pull the comment back up. Because for all the reasons you just stated, Scientologists do believe in aliens and UFOs and bases on the moon and Venus and, and Mars yeah. and ghosts. And that's not the even OT3 Thetans. stuff. No, not this isn't just, uh, yeah, absolutely right, Aaron. Oh, yeah. go read History of Man. Yeah, there's a lot of ghosts in History of Man. Even there's another book called Have You Lived Before This Life? That's another L. Ron Hubbard book. Oh, my there's God. There's freaking ghosts on the cover. I forgot right? about that one. Some yep. ghosty broads on the cover of that one. And that's the kind of stuff you can that they're selling to brand new people the moment they walk into an org. That's the stuff they want you yeah. to know right off the bat. That's not yeah. secret OT3 stuff. That's true. Nobody ever talks about that. Like, oh, they well, believe in space aliens. Oh, yeah, they believe in all that stuff. Have you lived before this life is no longer published? It yeah, isn't? After the, after the basics, it was thrown no, away, right? Was, oh. Yeah, because it actually wasn't written by Hubbard. It was a compilation of, of you know, success stories and stories written by various people so okay listeners here's your first assignment see if you can find one of those up on ebay and post yes. it in the chat <laughs> oh they're all over the place oh yeah okay <laughs> sorry I have one here somewhere and, yeah mike's got one on his shelf right now <laughs> okay l ron blubbered again i am insane in the membrane okay thank you for that good thing we got that one out of the way um denonymous did any actual Navy veterans ever become Scientologists? I think it would seem weird cosplay to them. <laughs> yes, there were Navy guys. There was a guy, um, do you remember um, Al, um, Al Mace, Mike Render? I know Al Mace. I didn't know he was in the Navy. He was in the Navy on a nuclear submarine. And because he had clearance. because he was little. Yeah, Mark, well, he Mark, was, yeah. It's nuclear what I say? Nuclear? You said nuclear. Nuclear. I just had to correct you. I know you grew up in a cult. Okay. Oh, listen here. Touche. Touche. Okay. <laughs> I'm about to go full Tony Ortega on you. <laughs> um, I tried to stay out of the drama, but I had to do that. Um, he was on a nuclear. Yeah, that's good. Nuclear submarine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. And because he had clearances, Dave thought he was a plant. Yep. And he was a spy and he had to go and he got taken off post. He had to go get sec check for six months. And after six months of thorough sec checking, turned out he wasn't a spy. He was just a guy that just happened to be on a nuclear submarine. Um, anyway, he also might have been closeted, Aaron, just to bring that up as well. <laughs> um, he did like to do lots of plies and wear sweatpants on the on civvies days. Yes. Um, and he did dance whenever there was like extracurricular activities this dude was dancing all over the place and he had even like little ballet shoes and everything are you so, serious i yes. i'm totally. not lying mike am i lying dead serious yeah, dead serious yeah and and he was like one of these 
well put together kind of handsome looking nice clean cut you know all american ken doll you know him aaron why? He's in one of the tech films where he does TRs with Lyman Spurlock, the old fuddy duddy, the that guy that does guy? TRs. Oh, that guy he is definitely in the closet. And you know guy. what else I just realized? You know what else I just realized? What? When Tom Cruise came to the base and was my auditor, Al Mace was his twin. Al Mace was the guy that was doing all the academy levels with him. And Al Mace was auditing somebody and Tom Cruise was auditing somebody. And the reason they use Al Mace is because Al Mace did all those things in the tech film yeah. exactly perfect. So it was like the best person we can get to do this with Tom is the person who did it for every other Scientologist in the film that trained you how to do it. Uh, in so. that film, he also looks like he's a very small person. He is, and I think that might have that could that was just a bonus because mm -hmm. he he's I mean he's not as short as Dave, but he's in between Tom and Dave somewhere in there somewhere. Hmm. I I think it's a serious thing that you can't be on a submarine if you're too tall. No, I I one hundred percent. That's a oh. I, it. Absolutely. I mean, you could if you had like some secret or some super special ability that made you qualified. But you're gonna have you're gonna have to bring a whole box of band aids with you because you're gonna be bonking your head full time. Um. Okay. Stacy, why with all the media lawsuits, books, YouTube podcasts, and TV series, can Scientology really validate an ad? during Super Bowl <laughs> they can validate it I don't know what that means but that means. they can run it but it's the correct me if I'm wrong here Mike because you did PR for a long time that ad is for Scientologists it's not for non Scientologists totally it's a fundraising it's a fundraising event. I mean those stupid ads don't tell anybody anything they're like all mystery sandwich curious all, where's the beef i mean there's nothing in them and scientologists think that this in, in creates enormous interest in scientology and they don't see the plant as peanut guy yeah dunking you know, on them dunking on them <laughs> and everybody else the instant the ad shows up everybody starts unloading on social media we and should totally be there uh, during the super bowl we should have all the tweets just stacked and ready to fire and as soon as that ad comes we just go <laughs> and then all the people come to the youtube channel because the people are like curious yeah i'm curious where the fuck that uh, david miscavige wife is where's she been why are you hiding her where's that david little davy miscavige fell they can't ever seem to find for the lawsuits yeah, we're curious. Um, Courtney Thavette, of course, Claire's, Claire's like, she's a like star and Claire is a sex symbol for all SSPs. Hashtag more Claire. Yeah, of course Claire starred that one. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> Russ T. <laughs> Thanks, Russ T. He had to top it off. He's like, I think you guys should get another dollar. That was a good answer to my question. Keith Dossett. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Again, you guys can uh, put questions in there. Aaron, the Delphi school I asked about is in Campbell, California. Think it is still Scientology? The info on the website was erased with the name change. That is incredible because there is a Da Vinci Academy here in Clearwater that has um, Positin, whoever the wife is of Russell Positin. I always forget. Um, that's the name I was trying to remember earlier. There are the Scientologists dominate the board of the Da Vinci Academy here in Clearwater. So it maybe may, I don't know. It's like a closet, like, a closet Scientology school. It's like an under the radar Delphi. Maybe they have a Delphi curriculum there. I'm gonna have to check into it. Well, thank you, Bean Sprout Mama. Lynn, Lynn Positin is like the the uh, the chairman of the board of that school or whatever. Okay. Cool. Did I show Keith? Thank you, Keith. Okay, uh, Denver Steve-O. Gentlemen, what mics and audio rigs are you all using? There's no audio rigs. We all have the Shure sure mic, is. and yeah. I have, I actually have like an Audio-Technica super paired microphone, with, but um, it has a Shure cover over it. It's a Shure MV7. Yep, there you go. Mine too. USB. Go. That's it's the one the, you should get. It's the podcast uh, choice for microphones. Are there any orgs or missions in Maryland? Nope. 
No. Nope. I mean, m missions just don't even count. There could be a mission to Maryland, and I would say it doesn't matter. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, for yeah. you guys that don't understand what a mission is, you could have a mission in your living room if you wanted. Like that's literally could be that's a mission. That's where most of them are. Yeah. In someone's yeah. living room. So you'd never know it was there. And when it opened, you'd never know. When it closed, you'd never know. Well, and a lot of times they're in strip malls in the middle. They're in between a donut shop and a dry cleaner. And they're open from 2 to 7 on Wednesdays only. Or they're in the back office of a dentist's. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if or in the waiting happens. areas. That's how some missions are in the waiting areas of a uh, chiropractor or dentist's. Yeah. If a mission had its own storefront in a strip mall, that would be a good mission. Yep. And that means yeah. the owner just happens to be rich and yeah. it doesn't mind spending the money because it's a tax deduction anyway. And it's a, it's a feather in their cap when they go back to flag for OT7 six month check. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, big dude 449. Some people call him a scavenge short. Maybe he's just down to earth. Ooh, that's a good one. See, now it's just like open mic night in the super chat. <laughs> people are just paying to have their jokes told. Um, oh my God, Claire, what is happening with the she ch to get viewers to help us crowdsourcing? But what WH? Okay, to get viewers to help. Oh, to get viewers to help is crowdsourcing. But whatever. Oh, okay. Good. Wow. Good translation. Good translation man. there. Man, you know how to read super chat. Um, Kara Doc at Claire. What did Claire's not in the chat? Um, maybe she's answering questions in the chat and she's starring them. Claire at Claire. What did Scientology feel and how did they DM react to JT dressing drag for Hairspray musical that was on national TV? Did he get pulled in? This did this happen while we were still there, Mike? No. Oh no no that that's recent okay wait define recent it's like 10 years at least well i know but we've I've been, been gone, gone for more than 10 years seven okay but how embarrassing was that from a scientology perspective to have john doing an entire movie as a woman well robin williams did it and no one was embarrassed by it i said it's from a scientology perspective no i know but it's like the same thing if robin williams was scientology and did mrs doubtfire who whoop de doo da I, I I think that generally most Scientologists looked at that and cringed. You think? Yes. But they wouldn't say anything because there was no official statement that said, oh, this was bad or, you know, John Travolta's being pulled into ethics for this or don't watch the movie or anything like it. And it was a success. And was it, what was the movie? Oh, Hairspray. 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 That was a successful movie. Okay, and I don't even, and yeah. frankly, he was pretty damn good in it. John Travolta is a good actor. He is yeah. actually a good actor. Yeah, and he's a good singer. But Mark, the difference in Mrs. Doubtfire is Robin Williams was playing a man who was intentionally dressing up as a woman so he could see his kids. Whereas in Hairspray, John Travolta just played the entire movie as a woman for no very obvious reason. Like, what? Well, I, I mean, oh, I didn't know. I haven't seen the movie, but he oh, was okay. He was drag basically, like the whole entire movie. No. Not he wasn't His switching kid. out. He's in. He's not. He's in a. <laughs> he's in a, a woman's suit. Like I'd call it a fat suit, but it was a woman's suit. Well, was, I know, but if he was playing a woman, she'd have to be a big woman because he's a big dude. It was a big woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, golly gee willikers. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not qualified to answer because I've never seen this movie. This is not in a movie I would probably go see. Okay. Um, Tess. Hey guys, can you tell me how they let people join in Germany if the whole country was SP? Switzerland loses bases too, by the way. <laughs> Listening to Mike's book. Um the whole country uh, isn't SP. I mean, that's well. That's Dave did say that. Dave said, "Oh, did he?" G Germany was an SP country. He made oh. Guillaume had a BMW. He made him sell the BMW because nah. Germany was an SP. And you know what else? But Dave got a BMW later. Exactly. Dave <laughs> was given a seven series by Author Services, um, L. Ron Hubbard's uh, literary it was actually a five. agency. It was a five series. Yeah, but it wasn't a five. It was a five forty-five. It was the big, it was oh, the, the big five, the biggest five you could get. Biggest engined five yeah. you could get other than an M5. It was wow. the fastest, no, it was a 550i, the fastest 
five series BMW that was available at the and time. And he didn't sell it. He didn't bring it to the base though. He just drove no. it in LA. So my, my, the guys at the have, base would not know that he had it. Mine and Heather's birthing was on the second floor right of the horseshoe where he would that's where he would park when he yeah. was in LA and his I don't know if it was his assistant communicator steward I, I never knew who those people were was yeah. out there waxing and polishing that thing by hand every single day it was beautiful you wax your car all day every day it'll look pretty good <laughs> or have one of your lackeys do it <laughs> okay uh no comment or question just messing with goldie thank you cat and maggie appreciate that um mike you've said that hubbard believed everything he said and wrote does dm believe this bs as well i don't know i i i, do, I don't know how to answer that question i i give long-winded answers to it i don't know that it matters much he believes it to the degree that he tells everybody he believes it because if he told him he didn't then they wouldn't put up with him anymore so is that different than the people who are deluded and believe it is he knowingly deluded and believing it or not i mean he professes to believe it and you know I, so does he i don't know i guess yeah. Danimus says, has there ever been a mass blow like the Great Escape? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, no. I don't think there has been, Mike. I mean, I don't know unless there was like an event somewhere that happened where just like well, a whole that, unit blew. There were some missions that did that. Yeah. That like the whole mission, the mission holder and all the staff went, okay, we're out of here. But that was a long time ago. Mark, quick, question, quick, quick comment. The yeah. people in the comment section are correcting me or educating me that in the play Hairspray, the musical Hairspray, the lead character is always played by a man in drag. So I guess when I said it was be, he was playing a woman for no obvious reason, uh, there was a reason for someone to be playing a woman. <laughs> it just happened that Travolta threw his hat into that ring. Okay. Um, I'll let uh, you answer this one, Mike, because this is about Kate. I'm curious if any of you know Kate Sobrano. She is an Aussie singer who I love. She moved to L.A. for a year and lived with Jenna Elfman ages ago, and Kirstie Alley used to love her. Do you know her? Yes, I know her very well and have spent a lot of time with her. In fact, her, I know her mother, her brother, her father, and her mother's sister was my babysitter from the age of two. Uh, her mother's sister was is Kay Conley. Kay Conley was the LRH Purse PRO in Los Angeles and my junior for many years and blah, 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 blah. Yes, I know Kate very well. She is a remarkably talented woman. She has also raised a Scientologist from birth, and that's all she knows. And Kate Sobrano has a cousin that's still at the ant base, Gary Conley. And so there's a lot of Kate Sobrano cassettes floating around the imp base because every time Gary Conley gets a, cha a chance, he whips it out and plays it and tells everybody that's his cousin. So I don't think Americans really understand. I mean, Kate Sobrano really is like the Mariah Carey of Australia, right? Yeah, But like back basically. when Mariah Carey was a respectable singer. Yes, Yeah. exactly. Well, she's yeah. probably still the Mariah Carey of Australia. I don't know if, if she's still as famous as Mariah Carey was once here, if she's still that famous in Australia. She might be just like Mary Mar uh, Mariah Carey. <laughs> okay, question for all three of you. Do you remember your first ever sec check? What did you think of it at the time? <laughs> My first ever sec that. check was to get um, to the imp base. And I just thought about the Depeche Mode concert that I went to where I was front row center the whole time and I had floating TA and I passed it uh, flying colors. My first ever sec check was to go to the Apollo and it was delivered. I was audited by Denise Miscavige. <gasps> really? She used to be in the Sea Org? Nope. She happened to be on her internship at St. Hill and there were no sec checkers available. So she sec checked me to go to the Apollo. Wow. That's a lot. That's a long way from slum landlord.
yeah, yeah. slinging dope to her tenants. <laughs> Yikes. If anybody doesn't know, Den Denise Miscavige is Dave Miscavige's twin sister, and she was arrested for selling narcotics to her tenants of the place that she um, the slum was, lord was, was the landlord of. She was collecting rent, and they paid in dope sometimes, and she took it and smoked it. Mark, I'm going to have to jump in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're almost at the end here. There's only um, a few little questions. Here we go. Lava Green. Hey, guys, I watch all three of you every day, and I do super chats when I can. Please say hi to Lisa from all three of you, please, unless it's too late. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Awesome. Okay. Um, Philip, lightning round, as Aaron says. Philip Harding Young. Mark, thanks for the signed book. Also, how does Narconon not get shut down for its non-medical detox? Um, I think they have some medical people on the board that uh, kind of say this is like a natural, holistic kind of uh, perspective of taking care of this. Um, it's super not healthy to do there's all that nothing, nice. There's and, nothing illegal about doing cold turkey detoxes. Um, right. Non yeah. Only if you're you can, giving yeah. someone drugs is yeah. that right. become a medical procedure. There you go. Yeah. Ryan, uh, Rye Dog, what happens to Sea Org members when they are too old to be productive and make money? They are thought of a, uh, the thought of a reverse cadet org of neglect terrifies me. That's exactly That's what happens. Team. They put them in a home and they let them die. But before that, they, they make take them take out money. as many credit cards as possible. And then they take their social security payment and they use a tiny little portion of that to pay those cards while Scientology cashes in on 50 or 60 or 70 or $100,000. Mark, I told John Poe earlier today I was going to jump on his live stream at 9. So okay. maybe I should just jump. Just jump off and Mike and I will right. finish. Buenas noches. Thank you. Did my <laughs> Adios, microphone amigo. just take a crap? Yes. Okay, I'm going to put this question up and you answer it, Mike, while I fix my mic. Did Chick Core get rap medical, get rap medical attention or did he try to cure himself? Appropriate. I know devoted... Oh. I love what you all do. I have no idea. I don't, I don't know, know either. Sorry. I mean, Sorry, Gary. He, he didn't, he did not pass before his time. I mean, he was 83 years old or something. That's not. Like... Yeah. And he was performing well into his late seventies, I think like doing concerts and stuff. He wasn't right. like sitting around. He was a busy dude. Yep. Um, Nuts and Brad recently saw a YouTube video on my timelines about Sylvia Calhoun. What's her deal? I've no never idea. heard of Sylvia Calhoun. Well, she was someone who was on the Apollo and worked oh. with Hubbard and left before I got there. I don't know Sylvia. I've never met her. I don't, so I don't have any answer. Okay. How can Scientology reach the goal of worldwide peace through Scientology if they won't let crazy people get Scientology? Crazy people are chaos. Well, that's mainly the reason why they don't let them in there because they. I'm pretty sure... Hubbard had his fair of crazies early on because he's written all kinds of policies about not letting crazy people come anywhere. Scientology is sort of a crazy magnet, too, I just realized. <laughs> Have you guys seen The Boys? There's a fake COS. COS. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, The Boys. The Boys. Oh, yeah, yeah, the TV show. Yeah, that's yep. so good. Um, Mike, are you currently stuck in Mark's personal RPF blink three times for yes? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome good i was gonna wait save that one for last but i forgot the chairman of the board thank you cob hey all the keeper king here your exalted leader just hanging out and being super casual if you want to do your a to e steps or just whisper sweet sweet nothings and please call me i miss you all ml dave okay no problem dave um people were um laughing in the chat because of that guy alex bands ross uh, Barnes Ross, Mike, do you have any insight on the UK corporate structure? Why is it run through Kosreki and Australian Chariot rather than registering in the UK? That is not a quick answer, but it just yeah, yeah, it's not a quick answer. Actually, there is a, a terrific article by by Ben Schneider's in the in Australia about that subject, and he sort of breaks it down, and there has been various other people who have written about it too. It's sort of a quirk of the law that Scientology was was recognized in Australia from the high court, and so using that recognition, the South Australian Corporation 
basically became the operating entity for Scientology in the United Kingdom to avoid taxes. Yeah, there's also uh, a journalist by the name of Brian Seymour did a bunch of videos on that that you could yep. look up. Yes, and Brian he did actually too. goes to the lo the address that they have listed, and it's like a farm where like a family are like growing vegetables. It's a house where they're growing tomatoes in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, it's just like <laughs> what? It's amazing. Brian Seymour did a ton of amazing coverage on Scientology in Australia and anybody down there should look, go on YouTube and look up that stuff. It's amazing. Uh, passenger shaming Mark's YouTube channel here has a hair less than there are current Scientologists worldwide. That's true. We're up to 20,000 now. Thank you. Um, if you haven't subscribed, get in there and subscribe. Catherine S miss, uh, Mike, when I was a kid at Gatos Mission, can you tell the story of what happened to force to class five? Well, that was the Joey Alessandrini story. Yeah, we talked of... about that earlier in the chat. If you missed it, just rewatch the video. It was one of the very first things we talked about um, in the um in I the think it was tonight. on Aaron's. Oh, yeah, it might have been on Aaron's. on Aaron's. Just rewatch both videos and like and subscribe, just to be sure. Uh, Jim Hopper, who is joining Scientology Day other than those born in? What kind of person is joining off the street today? Any idea how many are doing this? Not a lot. Not, not a lot a lot and it's most people pretty... joining off the street uh off the street in eastern europe or central america or somewhere where they don't have ready access to google yeah exactly um jason polycrime super chats not getting through um i think they're getting through because i just put yours on here jason and i did yours earlier second time yeah i did his already i did your whole um uh, ming and xenu thing. ming the merciless yeah it's all good. Um, okay, this is the last one and we're done. Terry Perry. Are there any country singers or just famous singers in Scientology? Who are they? I don't Not think a any. single country singer. There's has been very few famous singers. Brandy was in Scientology for a little while. Not that she was that famous. And she's not um, in anymore, I don't think. Not no. Van Morrison was in Scientology for a while, but yeah, not he's anymore. Not the best singer either. But he's pretty. He's a pretty famous singer. Famous, yes. That's yeah. true. It doesn't say good, just says famous. And um, I don't know. I don't know of anybody else. Skrillex. Skrillex is not a singer either. No, and he's not really that famous. It's pretty. I mean, maybe EDM. Um. We are uh, we're getting to the end here, folks. We're going to take care of some housekeeping. We got uh, Mike's book. If you haven't got it, um, Aaron plugged it on his channel, but you can go to Amazon, A Billion Years by Mike Rinder. Um, you can pick it up there. And then um, if you haven't subscribed, subs please subscribe. We're trying to get 80,000 subscribers by March 13th. We're trying to get Val Ron Hubbard a really good birthday present of 80,000 subscribers. And we got bobbleheads and SP bracelets at the SP shop if you, uh, if you want to get some there. And if you want to get a copy of my book, you can go to blownforgood.com. And um, oh, I'm trying to get, oh, there it is right there. It's on the bottom. Um, any copies bought there will be signed by my wife and myself. Um, thank you for joining us, Mike. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and staying till the very end. And we will see you next time. Until next time. I got a point right there. You got a point at the screen, Mike, right there. there you go. Thank you.